uh, exemptions from certain provisions under the Affordable Care Act. Number three is in the state of Florida, religious institutions which um, provide child care services are exempt from certain provisions regarding um, health and safety and sanitation that uh, non-religious institutions have to adhere to. So my question is, do you believe that religious individuals and institutions should have to follow the same laws that non-religious individuals and institutions have to follow? Or is it okay to make an exception to the law based on religion? Well, first of all, um, I don't. I, of course everyone has to follow the laws, but there should never be any law that forces you to personally violate your conscience. There's a difference between So you talk about the case of the clerk in Kentucky. She had what she said was a personal objection to signing that. The law should not have forced her to sign it. Someone else in the office, no, that doesn't mean the office doesn't have to do it. You still have to follow the law, but she personally should not have been forced to do it. No member of the clergy should be, should be told, listen, you either perform the same-sex marriage or we're going to fine you or we're going to take away your IRS uh, you know, exemption. No one should be personally forced to violate your conscience. Religious organizations that have a wealth, uh, you know, a, a Christian school. A Christian school, I'll give you an example. Most Christian schools in America teach that any relations between two people that are not husband and wife married are wrong. That's why they don't hire people that are cohabitating with their boyfriend or their girlfriend. Should the law force them to say, no, you must hire everyone and not take that into account? That undermines the very basis of their school. If you don't like it, don't go to that school. It's, it's a private school run by an organization. So of course everyone should follow the law. But you have to have a well-founded, if, if there is an exception, it has to be on a well-founded, conscious objection. And it can't just be, well, um, you know, we don't want, we, it's a, it's, we don't want to follow the sanitation rules because that violates my... My, my faith. For the most part, maybe there is some religious exception that would lead to that, but I don't, for the most part, that's not the kind of cases that we're seeing. The kind of cases that we're seeing are individuals that hold a deeply held belief that don't want to be personally forced to violate the law. They don't want to be personally forced to have to do it, to, to violate their conscience or be in violation of the law. And so that's what religious liberty is, because we need to understand religious liberty is not the right just to believe whatever you want. It is the right to live out your faith in every aspect of your life. And here's where I think the silliness comes into this and the danger. They act as if society is somehow not able to accommodate it. So like we need government to help us out because we can't figure it out on our own. That's absurd. We can figure this out on our own. People do this all the time in their lives. They do it all the time. So in the end, you know, the, 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 the example everybody uses is the florist or the baker. I don't know of any bakery or florist that's going to say, we don't serve gay people. We don't serve cookies. We don't sell flowers to anyone that, that was gay. That's absurd. That doesn't happen. And if it does, you know, it's a rarity. But they will say, look, I'm sorry, I'm a Christian. I don't want to participate in a ceremony, in a particular ceremony that violates my conscience. I think they have a right to be able to say that. It's not just, they just don't want to participate in a ceremony. They're not discriminating against a whole class of people. They just don't want to participate in an event that violates their conscience. And I think the society is willing to work, is able to work that out. It's not like we have a shortage of flower shops or a shortage of bakeries. And so, in the end, I think that society is fully capable of working through some of these issues without there being a regulation of law or a presidential speech. I mean, everything is not up to the Now I have one more point. If you go to, I'm a Christian, if you go to, I know most Christians would tell you, by the way, refusing to serve food to someone because of their uh, gender identity, their sexual preference is immoral. One thing is to say, I'm not going to participate in an event. Another thing is to say, I refuse to serve or interact with you. That also violates your conscience to do that. But I think society is capable of regulating that in our personal interactions. We don't need a law or a government program for every issue in our society. And so I think we need to get back to that conversation.